where developers take you under the hood of the innovative technologies changing our audio universe. In today's episode, we welcome Dan Goldstein, lead developer for Cherry Audio. Dan is the creator of a virtual modular synthesis environment called Voltage Modular. In the next 30 minutes, Dan will share his personal perspective about Voltage Modular. He'll explore how it was created, as well as where it's going in the future. At the end of Dan's presentation, Dan will respond to your questions. Give us your questions via the live chat on the right. After both the presentation and the Q&A, the discussion will continue as a forum thread indefinitely. Dan will check it periodically until every question is addressed. Thank you for tuning in to watch KBR Marketplace Presents. Please welcome our guest, developer Dan Goldstein. Hi, and welcome to my studio. My name is Dan Goldstein, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Cherry Audio and the lead developer of Voltage Modular. Voltage Modular is a pretty exciting product. It is a virtual modular synthesizer, but it's more than just a virtual synthesizer. It is an entire platform, an open platform, that third-party developers can build modules for, a platform that's infinitely expandable, and a platform that has a pretty interesting story. I've been asked by KVR to do this live event today. We're broadcasting live from my studio here in Las Vegas. And they've asked me to come and give something of a unique look into a software product. We're going to talk about Voltage Modular and what it is and what you can do with it. But we're also going to take a look into how a product goes from being an idea to being a product that you can buy. And in the case of Voltage Modular, it took a 14 year journey from the day I came up with the original idea to the day that we finally had a product to develop, uh, a product to buy that you could use, uh, which was a year ago. We are celebrating here at Cherry Audio, we're celebrating our one year anniversary of the release to the public of Voltage Modular. And with that, we're having a big sale, which ends very soon. It ends September 15th, where we are in the last four days of the sale. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about how you can get Voltage Modular absolutely free between now and September 15th. So you can try some of what I'm going to show you out for yourself. So uh, let's start by just diving into what is Voltage Modular? How does it work? What can you do with it? Um, this is not going to be a tutorial. I'm not going to do an in-depth tutorial into how to use the software, but I am going to show you how to make sounds with it. We're going to make a couple sounds and we're going to see how easy that process is. Uh, and we're going to hear just how great the instrument can sound and how complex the sounds can be with just a few minutes of work. So let's start by simply taking a look at Voltage Modular. Uh, this in front of you is what it looks like and this is what it sounds like. So as you can hear, you can build some pretty complex sounds, polyphonic sounds, uh, sounds that are full of effects and modulation and interesting things going on. So let's take a look at the interface and let's actually build a sound. So voltage modular up at the top is what we call the IO panel. And this is where all your control voltages from your keyboard arrive. Things like pitch and gate, velocity, uh, triggers, mod wheel, pitch bend. Next to that we have the polyphonic section which we can get into another time but Voltage Modular actually has an incredibly powerful system for building polyphonic patches. Uh, next to that is MIDI. 
You can route MIDI directly into modules that use it. And uh, transport signals, these are gate signals that come from your DAW. So if you're using Voltage Modular as a plugin in your DAW and you start playback of your project, you'll have a gate signal on the play jack, for example. Uh, here are the four audio inputs and the eight audio outputs. And that's how we get signals in and out of Voltage Modular. So let's start by actually building a, a simple subtractive synthesizer patch. We'll load a couple vintage oscillators. We'll load a ladder filter. Uh, we'll grab a couple envelope generators. And you can see over on the left, uh, we have our library of modules, which makes it really easy. We can just drag them in. Modules can be moved around freely. Uh, let's grab an amplifier. And as we're doing this, I'll show you some tricks. I'll show you what makes the workflow of Voltage Modular very fast. But let's start by hooking up our pitch control voltage. This is the, uh, the voltage from the keys that we press. These are going to go to the oscillators. We'll take our sawtooth waves and we'll put them into our ladder filter and we'll detune these oscillators just a little bit to fatten up the sound. We'll take the ladder filter output into the input of our amplifier and the output of our amplifier will go to the main out. Uh, we'll take gate signals from our keyboard and we'll run them into the envelope generator. And then we'll take the first envelope generator and we'll run that into our filter. Close the cutoff frequency, raise the resonance, maybe add a little saturation, and we'll create a, a kind of an interesting, a more interesting envelope shape for the filter. And then here for the amplifier, we will uh, use their, our second envelope generator to open the amplifier and we'll just have a little bit of a release so the notes will fade out. And so just like that, if I've done it correctly, we should have a nice sound. So just in a matter of a few seconds, we built a typical subtractive synthesizer. Now let's expand on that a bit. Voltage Modular uh, has hundreds, literally hundreds of modules available for it. We're just about at 400 these days. And every module gives you another thing that you can do to make the sound more complex and more interesting. But right now, today, we're just going to look at relatively simple modules just to, to see what we can do with them. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll take our keyboard pitch and we'll send it into this glide module because every good synth sound has some glide. And we'll turn up the glide and see what that sounds like. Cool, that's good. Let's detune these oscillators by an octave. Cool. All right. And let's load a module that we call the Mod Wheel Assistant. What this module does uh, is kind of interesting. This is a, an LFO that is controlled by the Mod Wheel. So it saves you having to use a separate LFO module and another amplifier module to do what we want to do. Uh, we're just going to use this as a modulation source. We'll use a triangle wave and we'll use it to modulate our filter when we turn up the mod wheel. So let's try that. Cool, let's just speed that up a little bit. All right, let's get a little more envelope going to that filter too. Cool. All right, so just like that, we have built uh, a pretty nice synth sound. Uh, now, let's take a look at some of the real power that we have with Voltage Modular. By the way, as you've seen, every jack in Voltage Modular is actually six jacks. So you can plug multiple cables into the same jack. Now, let's duplicate this cabinet. So just like that, now, we have two complete synth voices. And I'm just going to go ahead and 
uh, plug in the pitch and plug in the gate signals so these will be hooked up and now we have a complete voice let's grab a mixer module we'll just use a simple six input mixer module and we'll take the output of these two uh, voices which are currently identical and we'll use that as our master output and now here on the second voice that we've got let's turn that up a couple octaves and get rid of some of that detuning and let's have that voice fade in so we'll have a nice long attack for that so now when I hit a key we'll get that big growling bass sound and then slowly this much higher sound will come in. Let's try that. So we're going to lower the volume a little bit of that higher pitch sound. Uh, open our filter just a little bit more. But this is sounding good. And then just because we can, uh, let's have a little more glide, but only on the high sound. So now they kind of glide at different rates, which is sort of a cool effect. And now we've, again, we've built a pretty cool sound here in a matter of minutes with four oscillators, two filters, four envelope generators, two amplifiers. Uh, but let's take it a step further. Let's first off, let's get a nice delay effect on there because again, who doesn't like a bit of delay? And we'll crank up the feedback and see how that sounds. <laughs> Great. And now let's add another empty cabinet on top. And let's try doing something a little bit different this time. Let's grab the poly octave oscillator. This is a module that is essentially a self-contained organ all by itself. It takes MIDI input. It's polyphonic. You have four octaves that you can blend together. And it has its own separate attack and release envelopes. Let's just see what that sounds like. We'll plug it into our mixer and we'll solo just that sound. All right, and now we're going to load a module called the String Chorus. This module is essentially a model of the chorus effect from an Arp Salina string synth. And what it does to simple square waves is pretty cool. It does this. So now we've got a pretty cool string synth going on. Let's grab another mixer. By the way, you can hold down the Alt key and drag any module to make an immediate copy of it. And we'll take our string sound here and we'll take the output of this module into input number one and all that will go here. And now when we hit a key, uh, we'll hear both of those sounds combined. So finally, let's grab a splitter module and show what we can really do here. Uh, we're going to run MIDI into this splitter module and we're going to have all these pitch and gate signals come from the left side of the splitter module. And then on the right side of the splitter module, we're just going to send MIDI directly to this uh, poly octave oscillator. We'll hit the learn button and we'll choose a split point at C4. So what I've done is on the left side of my keyboard. Oh, and oh, I've done something wrong. Ah, there's always something. I've got this solo. That's why on the left side of the keyboard. We've got that big synth sound. And on the right side, we've got our string synth. And now we can play them together.
So again, in a matter of just a few minutes, we have built a polyphonic instrument with a keyboard split, a giant synth sound on one side of the keyboard, uh, a big string synth, classic string synth sound on the right side of the keyboard, and we did it in no time at all. And of course, we could take this further and further and further. We could add more modulation to it. We could add more effects. We could run it through a phaser. In fact, let's do that. Let's run this through a phaser and just see what that combined total does to our sound. Let's give that a try. A complete transformation with a single module. This is really the fun of modular synthesis. And in an environment like Voltage Modular, where you can just add more and more modules and your system can grow and grow, when an idea sparks your imagination, you can just throw more modules in and see what happens. So at this point, we've made what people would consider a big East Coast style classic synthesizer patch. Let's take a look at uh, something more West Coast. Um, now there's lots of ways to do a West Coast synthesis patch in Voltage Modular. Uh, and there's all kinds of modules made by some really fantastic third parties that do all kinds of random behavior. But for purposes of keeping it simple and showing what we can do, we're going to do it the old fashioned way with our friend, the noise generator which makes white noise. Good old white noise. White noise is completely random noise. If we look at it in an oscilloscope, what we'll see is just classic white noise. And we have an amount knob where we can control the volume of that white noise. But that's what we're going to work with. We're going to use this basic white noise to create a patch that automatically plays itself in a melodic way. And we're going to do that with a sample and hold module and a quantizer. These are going to be our basic components. So the sample and hold module will periodically sample that white noise and generate and hold whatever value it happens to be at at the time. And we have a rate control where we can say if we want that to happen very quickly or very slowly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to feed these random values into a quantizer. And we'll have this quantizer play in the scale of C minor pentatonic, which includes these notes. We can customize this scale. We can add any notes we want. We can select any key. And there's a whole bunch of other scales available which you can't see because that's not coming through. But that's OK. There's a menu of scales that just popped up, and it's fantastic. Uh, OK, so C minor pentatonic. Now we're going to load a basic oscillator. We're going to keep this really simple just to show how cool this is. And we'll use a simple amplifier module. And what we'll do is we'll take these notes in uh, C minor pentatonic that are being randomly generated. We'll have this single oscillator play those notes, and we'll use a sine wave into this amplifier. And now we can hear what that sounds like. I'm going to shift this up to a really high octave so we can really hear those notes. All right, cool. So now we have something of a melody of sorts uh, being played, even though it's very random in its, in its nature. Let's grab an envelope generator module. And finally, we're going to do something with this threshold module. What a threshold module does, uh, let's just plug in our sample and hold, and I'll show you what it does. So whenever a signal is generated by the sample and hold module, that is above a given threshold, 
the right side gate out will go uh, high. Well, I'll put five volts. And whenever the signal is low underneath the threshold, the left side, the under gate out, will output a signal. And so the higher our threshold, the less likely it is that the right side is going to light up. But you can see periodically it's lighting up. And when it does, we're going to feed it into this envelope generator. And we're going to have, we're just going to have this fade out. So it's just going to be a little burst of an envelope signal whenever this line gets high enough. So you can hear what's happening here. Or we're, we're getting bursts of this melodic bit of music. But it's being played just periodically, just when the threshold is high enough. So now we have that sound, and that's a good start. Let's grab uh, an oscillator. You know what? Let's grab our VCO20 dual oscillator. This is a really cool module that emulates the oscillator section of a Korg MS-20 synthesizer. It's got a great growling sound to it. And we'll also grab the VCF-20 filter. This uh, likewise emulates the filter section of a, Korg, of a classic analog Korg MS-20 uh, synthesizer. And it's a, just a great sounding filter. So we'll take this mix of oscillators and we'll feed it into the low pass input of this filter section. And let's grab a mixer. I'm gonna use this great big mixer, this console mixer, just cause I wanna show it off cause it sure is great. Uh, we're gonna feed this growl, this sound that we've just made. And let's lower the cutoff and raise the resonance. Make sure it has plenty of saturation. And we'll feed that into the first input. And we'll take our twinkly little melody and we'll feed that here into input number five. And finally, the last thing I want to do is I want to grab an LFO. So much of the fun of modular synthesis comes from things like LFOs and envelope generators where we can make things change, modulate slowly over time. We're going to take this LFO and a sine wave, and we're gonna have that open and close this filter. So if we listen to what we've done, let's slow that way down. Let's get that a lot growlier. Maybe take it down an octave. There we go. Okay, and then finally, we're just gonna have to have a delay effect on this sound that we've made. So we're going to take the output of this amplifier and we're gonna feed it into a delay with plenty of feedback. And let's see what we've got now. There we go. Okay, now that's pretty cool. So what we've done here is we've created a patch that is completely randomly playing itself. And it's playing itself in a very melodic way. It is the synthesizer making music all on its own uh, by using random signals. And if we turn up the noise generator volume, we're going to get higher pitches introduced. And we're going to have a higher likelihood of this threshold module firing. So if we turn that threshold module up a bit, now we're going to get a lot higher notes. It's going to get a little sparklier. And again, there's no end to where we can go with this. We can take another LFO and we can use it to modulate the frequency of this oscillator. So if we turn that up, we can get a lot of weird sounds that way. I mean, everything we do, every experiment that we try, every module that we add, just makes this more and more interesting. And because we're not talking about hardware, we're not talking about modules that cost hundreds of dollars each, it's really just a matter of loading in a module, trying what you wanna do. If you don't like it, you know, if we don't like what this is doing, we'll just remove the module, go back to what we had and the, the sky's the limit. We, we are not kidding when we say that this is 
infinite in its possibilities. That is what modular synthesis is all about. At its heart, that's why people care about this stuff. That's why people build these big modular systems. And that's why people get so excited about this. Because it is ultimately synthesis without boundaries. Synthesis that can go wherever you want it to go. And that is uh, pretty exciting. At least if you love this stuff the way we do. It is really exciting. Um, so now we've seen how to build a couple patches again in a short amount of time we made some really cool sounds uh i want to show you i want to just kind of take a look at how um how third parties can develop their own modules because we talked about that as being part of this system and it really is this is our vo our voltage module designer tool it's really just a matter of dragging in components like knobs and sliders and jacks and simply dragging them in and sizing them any size we want, positioning them anywhere, choosing skins. Uh, we include a lot of different skins, but you can create your own custom skins. There's all kinds of different styles available. And you can size these controls anywhere you want. Um, you can choose a color for the background or you can add images, all kinds of custom images. Um, and all this stuff is modifiable. Some of it I know is not because it's in Windows and this isn't showing you the windows that I'm using. But you can see we can change the color. And then uh, on the right side are the simple functions that a programmer can fill in. The, the most important one being process sample. Every sample in Voltage Modular is processed individually. So in this function, a programmer can read all the input values, do any DSP processing they need to do, and then output the output values. And in the notify functions, we receive messages such as knob changed or slider changed. Uh, these messages tell you when a user turns a control, plugs in a cable, does just about anything. And so it's really fast for a programmer to add code to uh, to respond to changes in controls. All of the code is written in Java, which makes it automatically cross-platform. That Java code uh, gets compiled and ultimately run as native code on your computer. So whatever you've heard about Java being slow, that's not the case uh, in Voltage Modular. It is as fast as can be. And every module that's built is fully cross-platform automatically without anything special being done. Developers, once they've built a module, they can use it uh, in their own system. If they are a commercial developer, they can publish those modules to our store and they can sell them or give them away to customers. And the development tools are completely free for you to download and use to develop your own modules. So it's a really, easy to use and powerful system and that has allowed voltage modular to go from around 100 modules when we launched a year ago to just about 400 modules today we have new developers signing on all the time and the the platform is just growing and growing and it's really exciting to see it's exciting to watch especially once we talk about where this idea came from uh, which we'll do right now so I'm going to start that story of where Voltage Modular came from by talking first off just a little bit about myself, uh, who I am and uh, what my involvement in this product is. Um, so I've been developing professional music software for over 20 years. I started out at uh, a company that some of you may remember called Sonic Foundry, uh, creating some of these tools like SoundForge and Acid and Vegas. Uh, and I worked for Sonic Foundry for several years until ultimately they got sold to Sony. And after that, I went to work for Acoustica, uh, which is a just phenomenal company that makes uh, award-winning music software. And when I say award-winning, I mean it. Look, here's one of our awards that we won. Um, we have uh, one a number of awards for our Mixcraft recording software and uh, some of our virtual instruments that we make and include with the software. And so I spent, uh, spent 20 years uh, working on products like that. And 
back in 2004, I came up with an idea. I came up with an idea for building a virtual modular synthesizer that could be expanded with as many modules as someone wanted to add. So no limits on how many oscillators or how many filters or envelope generators or LFOs you could have. The system was designed to be expandable. And I based it off of my synthesizers.com hardware synth, which you might be able to see behind me, um, which I had at the time and which I loved. And I thought, boy, it sure would be cool to do this in software. So what I did is I built a prototype uh, of my idea. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to show you this prototype, which nobody has seen. Uh, no one outside of a handful of, of my friends have ever really seen this prototype. So let's take a look at it. This is where the idea for voltage modular began. And you can see there's a lot of familiar elements to this. Uh, quite a bit of what we already talked about is in here, including things like glide. Uh, this was not, this is what we in the industry call programmer art, uh, which means an artist never touched this. This was all uh, just me putting this together to test out various ideas and to make sure it worked. And part of what is ultimately impressive about this, uh, besides the fact that it really does work well, uh, is that it worked well back in 2004 when computers were not as capable as they are today and getting this sort of real-time low latency response was actually quite challenging and so after building this prototype I knew that the idea that I had was a good idea and was something that would work but back in 2004, modular synthesis was not as popular as it is today. And there were other projects going on. And this ended up sitting. It sat on a shelf for a while. And part of the reason why it sat on a shelf was that I was not entirely convinced that building the product the way I had imagined it was the best idea. And I didn't know why. I wasn't sure why. I, something bothered me about it. It didn't seem like it was everything that it could be. And then I watched this movie. It's called I Dream of Wires. It's a fantastic documentary that was put together uh, all about modular synthesis. And at the time that this came out in, um, oh, about five years ago, uh, modular synthesis was really starting to explode in popularity and the euro rack hardware standard was becoming increasingly popular and as I watched this film this is the the four hour hardcore edition <laughs> uh, as I watched it what I realized was when people showed off their giant modular synthesizers that they had built it became very apparent that they were buying modules from lots of different manufacturers and they were combining them together into unique custom systems. Systems that were ultimately reflective of the personalities of the musician. So they'd buy oscillators from one company and filters from another company and they would build a system that was their system with their sound. And I, I realized that that's what my idea was missing. Because if I was the only developer for my modular platform, then that platform would only have my ideas in it. It would only have the sounds that I would use and it would only have the kinds of modules that interested me. And I realized the system had to be open. It had to be completely open so anyone could develop modules, anyone could create their own modules and sell them and offer them up for other people and ultimately build a system that was not just mine, but which was everybody's. And once I had that idea, once I had that realization, I knew that this was the right way to go. So back in 2016, I assembled uh, some friends of mine, some developers, some people I've worked with, and we got together and we talked about the idea. Here's a photo from that session 
and we began talking about what this product would be. And I'm happy to say everyone got excited about it. It was the right time. It was the right idea. The idea was now mature. And uh, we began thinking about how this software would work. The thing about developing software is that it's not a glamorous and exciting process to look at. In 2017, I got my new development team together and we met in California and we started doing this. Lots of this, because when you design software, you get a lot of whiteboard drawings done and you start sketching out how things will work. And that's how software comes to be. Uh, we spent several days designing every aspect of what this product would be. We needed a name for the product. We needed a name that in a couple syllables explained what this product was and what it could do and got to the heart of what we were doing. And this is not easy. Naming a product is not easy. We went for long walks. We threw out hundreds of ideas. And ultimately, it hit upon us. Really, what is modular synthesis? Modular synthesis ultimately is all about voltage. You take cables, you plug them into modules. And on these cables are, are signals made up of voltage and current and they go from one module to another and some of those voltages represent uh, control signals and some of them represent audio and ultimately when you patch this voltage from one place to another you create sound and that's what we were doing we were precisely replicating that experience the experience of taking voltage in your hands and and sending it places and using it to create sound and that's where the name Voltage Modular came from. The name Cherry Audio for our company followed very quickly after that. And we got to work building the product. Uh, this is a shot that we found in our archives of, uh, this is the day we got cables drawing properly. So if you look at this very, very early shot of, of what becomes Voltage Modular, you can see that there are modules with different backgrounds. You can see knobs, you can see jacks, you can see the cables, um, you can see the wooden cabinets. The raw elements of what ultimately became Voltage Modular are here. And after a year of development, we had, uh, we had a product. And we went to NAMM. We went to the NAMM show uh, in uh, early 2018, last year. And in this picture, you can see Mitchell uh, who's an incredibly talented musician and uh, synthesizer programmer. He also designed most of the Cherry Audio modules that are in Voltage Modular. He is doing a demo of an early version of Voltage Modular for one of the websites, I'm not sure who, uh, that came at the NAMM show and, and filmed uh, what we were doing. Um, we had some crowds gather around. We got a lot of interest in the software when we showed it off. Uh, we had a few celebrities and uh, at least celebrities in the synthesizer world come and take a look and get excited about what we were doing. And quite honestly, that got us excited about what we were doing. I mean, we, we had a pretty good idea that we were on the right track uh, after NAM when we saw the excitement. And so we kept at it and we released Voltage Modular just about a year ago now. Uh, with about 70 modules plus another 25 or 30 third-party modules from PSP and from Misfit Audio that you could purchase and a few of our own Cherry Audio modules that were uh, available separately for purchase. And over the course of the last year, boy, that's just grown and grown and grown. <laughs> uh, and as I said, we now have a lot of developers building for the platform. We have hundreds of third-party modules available. Uh, and the system has just grown to be everything that we could hope uh, it could be. What is so exciting about it is when new modules come out and we see some of the amazing filters that companies like Volt have created, um, some of the just unbelievable effects that PSP has created. 
uh, some of the just fascinating modules from people like Andrew McCauley and Bernard, uh, the, the incredible distortion and oscillators uh, and filters that have come from our newest developer, Mark Barton. It is, uh, it's just great. I mean, to hear what this system is capable of and to see what these talented developers can do, it just blows us away. So as I said, after all this, uh, it's been a year and we decided to celebrate. Um, and we launched, uh, we launched our year one celebration, uh, which was essentially a sale uh, the biggest sale we'd ever had and we slashed the prices of everything that we build by a significant amount uh, we got a lot of our third parties to get on board and we did something else that was pretty exciting which is we released a new smaller bundle of modules called voltage nucleus and until September 15th, for the next four days, Voltage Nucleus is completely, absolutely free. So if you go to cherryaudio.com, uh, all you have to do is create an account. And this is what Voltage Nucleus looks like. There are 22 modules, and it's quite a bit. Oscillators, filters, envelope generators, mixers. Uh, there's a sequencer, there's an arpeggiator, there are some effects like uh, our spring reverb effect and our delay module and our distortion module. This is by no means a limited set. We added over a hundred presets to it and uh, everyone can go out and get it right now at cherryaudio.com. Uh, so Nucleus is completely free and has 22 modules. Ignite, which we've normally been selling for $50, is on sale for $25. That has 45 modules. And then finally, there's our core uh, our core package, which is uh, our regular price is $200. We've been selling it for the last, basically for the last year for $99. Uh, and for the next four days, it's on sale for $50. Core contains over 90, 97 modules, something like that, plus another 15 drum modules from Misfit Audio. That includes a drum sequencer and a whole bunch of electronic drum modules that emulate sounds from classic uh, drum machines. Um, this is actually a phenomenal deal. And if you scroll down here in the KVR Marketplace, um, you can uh, you can buy it right here on KVR if you're watching this video here on KVR. Uh, also over here, I think on the left side, uh, on the right side of your screen is the chat window. If you want to ask any questions, uh, I'm about to answer some uh, some of your questions live. So um, if you uh, again, if you if you're interested in what you've seen, if you want to try it out, if you want to learn about modular synthesis. Uh, go to cherryaudio.com. We have some tutorial videos on our site uh, so you can learn more about using Voltage Modular. Nucleus is absolutely free, so you can try this stuff out for yourself. You don't really have to know anything about modular synthesis just to try it out and, and experiment with it and, uh, and see what you think. So, okay, so I've got some questions coming in. Um, uh, the first question is from KVR member Joe Luvar, who asks, which mod bundle do you recommend for the newbie? Um, honestly, while I'd love to sell you packages, just go and get Nucleus. It's absolutely free. It's 22 modules. You can try it out, see what you think. If you like it, if you're excited by what you see, if you want to try more, by core for fifty dollars, you get so much; it's unbelievable. It includes polyphonic modules. Uh, it includes a ton of amazing effects. Um, but Nucleus for for a cost of zero dollars is just a phenomenal place to start if you're an absolute newbie. Um, okay, KVR user Organism asks: Can Voltage Modular host plugins? If you have our core package, it absolutely can. And that is uh, just a really neat side of it. Let me show you. Uh, let, let's do a little demo here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll just clear what we've got and I'll show you how that works. So our Voltage Core package has our mini plugin host and our full plugin host. The only difference between them 
is how many parameters you can modulate simultaneously. So essentially what you do is you select a plugin and it will load VSTs, VST3s, and audio unit plugins. Um, let's grab something pretty simple here, something that'll load quickly. Um, I'm thinking, boy, I just don't know what to load here. Um, just looking for something small and easy that we can work with. Ah, I know. How about one of these, um, one of these Zebra plugins? So we can select it. We can view its editor, uh, oh, which I do not have a license for. And then we can select any of these parameters. Uh, we'll grab this dry knob here and we'll grab an LFO and we'll just show you how we can use any sort of control voltage to modulate any of these parameters. Uh, and then of course you can run audio through effects. You can run MIDI into instruments. Uh, and you have a choice of latency. You can get very low with the latency if you ha have a fast enough computer. So uh, you can have as many plugins running simultaneously as your computer can handle, and you can modulate many parameters simultaneously as well. So this, uh, this can get extraordinarily interesting when you start combining your own uh, virtual instruments and effects into your patches. It's a great way to, frankly, build some really complex and, uh, and beautiful sounds. Um, okay, so we have another question here from uh, Covert Labs who asks, how can I get the tools to develop my own modules? Just go to cherryaudio.com, click on the module designer up at the top, and it is completely free to, the, to download the tools. Uh, and develop modules for personal use. A commercial license normally costs $99. That's a license that you need in order to sell modules, to submit modules to the store, uh, either for sale or to just give them away. Uh, and I'm pretty sure with our year one anniversary, I think that right now for the next four days is only $50 as well. Uh, but again, you don't need a commercial license to develop your own modules. You can just, um, you can just download the tools and get started and if you happen to build something that you're proud of and that you think is cool then buy a commercial license later and submit it to the store uh and uh see what other people think of it um all right one more question let's see um uh this is a more technical question it's from exe consulting asking if I have any suggestions for converting uh, code from C++ to Java. Um, I don't want to get too technical in this broadcast, but Java is very, very similar to C++. Uh, you'd be surprised how easy it is to convert C++ code to, uh, to Java code. It's actually very simple. It, it, ultimately, the only real difference is that math functions, things like tan for tangent or exp for exponents uh they just have math dot tan or math dot exp in front of them because in java everything's a class but um you can go to our forums or our facebook page for uh tips you can contact us directly on our forums we have a, a forum for uh, module designer, uh, module developers, third-party developers who want to ask programming questions. So we're happy to answer your questions there. Um, we're also going to be keeping an eye on the KVR forum that's down below this video uh, over the next few days to answer any questions that you might have. We have a very active forum for Cherry Audio here on KVR. And there's a very active thread for the last year uh, also on KVR. Uh, that you're welcome to find and uh, ask us questions on. We really try to keep an eye on KVR uh, all the time, as well as our own forums and our Facebook page and everything else. So it's getting dark here in Las Vegas. I think we'll wrap up this broadcast, but I really want to thank you for joining me. Uh, I want to thank KVR for having us on behalf of everyone at Cherry Audio. Uh, thank you, KVR. And thank you everyone out there for watching my broadcast. And I'd particularly like to thank Dan over at KVR, 
who has just gone above and beyond to make sure that this broadcast happened and happened smoothly. So thanks again for joining me. And uh, uh, don't forget, Voltage Nuclear is absolutely free until September 15th. Go to cherryaudio.com for more information. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to watch KBR Marketplace Presents. If we didn't get to your question during the Q&A, we will in the forum thread below. If you watched this event live, thanks for adding to the moment. You can watch it again at any time right here on KVR Marketplace Presents. To learn more about the technology presented today, look for links on this page. Bookmark our page to be sure you don't miss future episodes. And thank you again for watching KVR Marketplace Presents.